Good evening, folks. It's good to be with you again. I'm sorry that we're having to do it uh, uh, via video, but uh, I'm glad that we have that, uh, that capability in order to share the gospel. Stay with my church, study together, and this takes place of our Wednesday night uh, service. We are, uh, I wanted a Bible study for Wednesday night, and uh, you know, you will pick it up whenever, but uh, uh, hopefully that you will, uh, will get something from it. Uh, God will bless you, but I'm missing you folks. I'm missing seeing you uh, and uh, the advantage that you have uh, You can see me when I can't see you, but but let me just remind you the church is just as much together Now as it ever is when we are assembled uh, In the facilities in the building in the sanctuary or on Wednesday night in the uh, uh, in the chapel so uh, we're still the church, and we're still together. Let's pray before we start. Father, thank you again for our time together today. Thank you, Father, for, for all that are watching, and as we prepare to study the very Word of God, may we allow you uh, to speak to us. May we grow spiritually as we study and fellowship together. I'm praying for those that are watching me. Uh, hopefully, uh, they are praying for me as well. We'll get through this. Certainly, God has got this. Romans 8, 28. And we know, and we know that all things work together to good for them that love the Lord. Something good is taking place. Maybe it's the church's faith is being built up stronger than ever before. Thank you, Father. We pray for those uh, that have requests today. We lift them up. We pray for the missionaries that Jane normally uh, reads, and we just pray for each other. Your will be done. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Now, what we're going to do, uh, I chose the book of Mark. Uh, maybe I chose it for probably the, uh, the wrong reason because it was a short book, and I, had, I thought we would have time to get over, get through this before, uh, you know, we, we are able to assemble back in the facilities here uh, because it being a short book. But as I have been preparing, uh, I have learned a lot that I didn't know, and I have been blessed with the study, and I hope that you will be blessed from the study as well. So let me just have a little introduction to the book of Mark. I hope that you have your Bibles, and you are going to turn there to the book of Mark in your New Testament, uh, and we will study just exactly like we study uh, on Wednesday night. So, so uh uh, the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called synoptic Gospels. So what does synoptic mean? It means uh, to see things together. So Matthew and Mark and Luke uh, all are talking about the life of Jesus. Now, Mark starts at a little different place than does uh, Matthew and Luke. Uh, they both present the uh, uh, the birth of Christ, and, uh, and Mark starts right at the time he begins his ministry. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that was probably, probably Mark's idea was, was, was to just represent the ministry uh, of Jesus Christ himself. Uh, Barclay, one of the commenters that I use in, in my studies, uh, uh, he, he says that, that Mark is a most important book, and, and, uh, and Mark uh, is, is he, he calls Mark the earliest, uh, earliest book by, by uh, most scholars. Uh, it is agreed that Mark is the earliest of all the Gospels, and therefore the first of the life of Jesus that would come down. Now, Mark wrote in a time when there were just simply no books or certainly not many books out there because everything had to be written by hand. Uh, in, in other words, uh, Mark had to write out his book, so there wasn't many copies of it uh, as well. We are blessed today that we have all of the, uh, <clears throat> the technology uh, that we have, plus we have the Bibles that we can, we can read it and read it for ourselves and spend time in the Bible and in studying uh, also. <clears throat> so Mark, Mark was the son of a well-known lady 
in Jerusalem named Mary, and whose house was a rallying point and a meeting place for the early church. That's recorded in Acts 12, 12. Now, I hope you will maybe have a note, notes there and jot some of these things down, some of the scriptures in Acts 12. 12, it was where when Peter had been locked up for his life and, and, and he had been freed by the angel and, and there in Mary's house, uh, that was John Mark's mother in Mary's house, uh, they were praying for Peter and when he knocked on the door, uh, the damsel was so excited that she went back and told the people uh, that were praying for him and they were, uh, 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 were excited and doubtful as well. So that was Mary, John Mark's mother. Now, uh, also, uh, he was the nephew of Barnabas that he went on the first missionary journey with Barnabas and Paul. Uh, some scholars say that he was a cousin of Barnabas, and that's not really uh, uh, not bothering to me at all, whether he was a nephew of Barnabas or whether he was a cousin of Barnabas. Now, he went on the first mission trip with uh, Paul and Barnabas, but about halfway through that trip, John Mark, for some reason, left them, and, and scholars don't give us any real reason as to why he did leave. Maybe he was homesick over his mother. I don't know. But anyway, uh, John Mark left them and came home. When Paul and Barnabas then prepared the second missionary trip, uh, Barnabas wanted to take uh, Mark, and Paul did not want to take Mark, so they kind of split and went in two different directions uh, in the mission field uh, because of that. Now, we're going to get to a passage of Scripture here uh, in uh, in, in Mark's gospel, the very first chapter, when we see John uh, out in the wilderness and uh, scholars seem to think he was living out there uh, and wearing camel's hair uh, and, and the leather girdle. Uh, and and uh, that was quite a difference from, from the lifestyle that he grew up in. And uh, maybe Mary wondered what was going on with John. I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking from a parent's stand standpoint. But at uh, any rate, uh, John uh, was a little different from the norm. But he was a man that, that, that loved God and believed that God was sending, uh, sending a Messiah that would be named Jesus Christ and believing uh, that he was the one that would prepare the way. We'll get into that a little bit in the study. Let me just share with you a few things about, the, uh, about uh, John's writings. Uh, number one, uh, Mark's writings, I'm sorry. Number one, Mark's purpose for writing was to present the person, the work, and the teaching of Jesus Christ. Mark shared more miracles than either Matthew or Luke shared. He was presenting none other than the person, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and his power. Uh, the author of the book, and we already uh, know that, was John Mark himself. He was not one of the original disciples. He was a friend of Peter, we're told, and, and uh, got a lot of his information from Peter itself. Uh, it was written to the Gentile people, uh, written mainly, we believe, in Rome, uh, where he had moved in Rome to be with Peter uh, and Paul, and, and, and before and after they died, uh, that was when he is believed to have written, uh, written this book. Some scholars say it was written around somewhere between A.D. 55 and A.D. 65. Most scholars kind of sit on the, on the 65 part of that. The key verse in Mark is Mark, the 10th chapter, and the 45th verse. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, rather, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom uh, for many. So, so Mark, again, was identifying Jesus didn't come 
to be a king that would be served. He come to be a king that would serve. And that, my friends, has trickled all the way down from the first century all the way down to the 21st century that you and I are living in. He came to serve. He came to be a ransom that, that sin had captured you and I, had captured you and I, and we, 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 were, we were totally captivated, but Jesus came and to pay and paid that ransom to free you and I. Hallelujah. What a great Great thought. The, uh, uh, and then uh, Mark was probably uh, the first gospel writer. Now, other scholars kind of disagree with that, but I, I'm going by this. I like this, and it doesn't change the word in any way. Mark was probably the first of the gospel writers. Listen to this. The other two gospels, Matthew and Luke, quoted all but 31 verses of Mark's writing. All but 31 verses of Mark's writing were included in Matthew's gospel and in Luke's gospel combined. That's an awesome thing. Mark records more miracles than Matthew or Luke recorded. Now, unlike Matthew and Luke, uh, Mark began, uh, that begins with Jesus' birth, Mark jumps right to the public ministry of Jesus. The very first verse identifies Mark and his movement and his teaching. The very first verse says the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark had no doubt, had no doubt who he was writing about who he was writing about. And he begins with the ministry of John uh, and then the baptism of Jesus and then Jesus being led into the wilderness. When Paul and Barnabas took the first missionary journey, he was with them. And later, of course, uh, Paul and Barnabas split uh, on, on that behalf. Now, let's, uh, let, let's, get, uh, let's get right on into the study Hopefully you've already turned or got your Bibles open to Mark, the first chapter. And, and the very first verse in Mark uh, goes like this. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark left no doubt what this book, his writing, was all about. It was about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was the Son of God. In Hebrews 1, 12, uh, we're told, I'm going to find that real quickly and, and share that with you. I think that's very important. In Hebrews, the very first chapter, and the first and second verse, the he writer of Hebrews, we believe to be Paul, the Apostle Paul, God who at sundry times, or at different times, or at some times, uh, and in diverse manners, uh, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. In the Old Testament, God's word came through the prophets. God's word came through the prophets. But now, but now, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, by his Son, whom he also appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Mark identifies Jesus as not just being born here on the earth as, as uh, Matthew, and it's great that he did, and Luke, it's great that he did, uh, that they proclaimed in their writings, but Mark identified Jesus as being back at the beginning of time. Wow! Being back at the beginning of time. Jesus has always been. But now... Uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, God spoke to the people through the prophets. But now, in this 21st century, he's speaking to us through the very word of God. Jesus came. Jesus came to, to be a servant of the people. A servant that was sent by God 
himself. Now let's go on to the second verse. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Now, his messenger was John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Why did John move out into the wilderness? I don't know. I feel like he was led by God to do that. To get away from, from all that was going on, all that would distract him. He moved out into the wilderness and he began to preach. You know what? He didn't have the media that we have to identify that, hey, John the Baptist is going to be preaching in the wilderness. It went out by word. It went out by word as the people began to come out. So the prophets had already declared this. Let me just let me just remind you of that. Isaiah, Isaiah back in the 40th chapter, the third verse, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his desert a highway for our God. And then in Malachi, Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, also says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now, uh, the Old Testament had predicted, certainly that Jesus was coming, but they predicted that John the Baptist was going to come and prepare the way. Now, folks, let me just insert something here. A little difference, not even in the study. But let me just insert something a little different. The church today is to prepare the way for Christ coming back to rapture the church out. Are we doing a good job at that? I hope that we are. I trust that we are. So you see, we are sent by, by, by God to prepare the way for his second coming. As it is written, second verse, as it is written, the prophet... Behold, uh, are saying, Behold, I send my messenger, that would be John the Baptist, before your face, which shall prepare the way of Jesus Christ and his coming. Now, verse 3. Verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. That was John. That was John. Now, crying is not always referring to tears streaming down your cheek. It's yelling out. It's speaking out. It's, it's speaking out. John did that. They're in the wilderness. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. Now, let me talk to you just a little bit about John and is preparing the way. He wasn't making a road for the people to walk on. He was introducing them to Jesus Christ. That would be coming. That's to let them know a little bit about who this man is that is coming and some of the powers that he's going to be executing. It is to prepare the people for the coming of Christ. It is preparing them through his preaching, through the repentance and the baptism that there's something to be done as we change from our immoral lives to a righteous life. To a righteous life. That's what John was, be do was doing. He was preparing the people to know that one is coming. That one is coming. That is so great that I'm not even worthy to unlatch his sandals. To unlatch his sandals. So the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. In other words, make sure that the people know that somebody is coming, that one is coming. And we need to be prepared to listen to what he has to say. And then verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And what baptism was doing back then was identifying the change that was taking place in the lives of the individual. 
Now, that's exactly what our baptism does. It doesn't wash away our sins. It doesn't do that. It is us identifying that we have already accepted the message of this messenger that John was preparing, was telling the people about. We have already accepted the fact that he came, that he became that ransom for our sins. He died on a cross for us, and he proved who he was by raising from the dead and living among us now through the person of the Holy Spirit of God. So, so baptism was very much the same uh, identity uh, back then as it was today. It's identifying a decision that we have made. So when our candidates go through the baptismal waters up in the front of the church, and, and Paul used this illustration, being buried to an old way of life and raising to a new way of life. So John, John was, was, was talking about that baptism there in the wilderness. Uh, verse 4 again, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. Verse 5, and there went out unto him all the lands of Judea and Jerusalem. Now, let me talk to you just uh, briefly about that. Why did he say Judea and Jerusalem? Well, you know what? After the death of Solomon, Israel split. They split. They began, began to be two groups of people. And Israel is noting the northern kingdom, or the ten, ten tribes, of, of, the, of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and Jeroboam, who was the captain of Solomon's army, he became their leader. Northern Kingdom, it was known. And it was, their headquarters was Israel, or their capital was Israel. And then Judah became known as the Southern Kingdom. They were two tribes. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, became their leader. So what John is saying here when he uses both of those names that all 12 tribes were responding to John's teaching. All 12 tribes of Israel were responding to John's teaching uh, there in the wilderness. That's what Mark is writing about. Verse 5 again, and there went out unto him, that is John the Baptist, uh, all the land of Judea and of Jeru that were in Jerusalem, and all were baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, this scripture is interpreted in several different ways, even in, in our society today. They confessed their sins and then were baptized, being in that baptism identified the fact that they had confessed their sins. And they were identifying with burying an old way of life and raising to a new way of life. Confessing their sins was first before baptism. Confessing our sins today is first before baptism. And I think I want to add just a little something. This is Holostonian theology, if you will, of that fifth verse. And all the lands of Judah and all the lands of Jerusalem were baptized. Now, that's probably not speaking of every person uh, ever, it's just, it's more of a figure of speech. And if you want to believe that all of us, and, and I would love to believe that myself, then that's okay. That's not going to divide who we are. But, you know, we, we often talk to each other. Who was there Sunday? Everybody. No, everybody wasn't here. But it's just a figure of speech. But, but anyway, you, uh, you, you translate that the way that you want to, and it won't be any, won't be any difference than, than what, what I'm saying. So let's hop on down to verse 6. We'll probably get 
get through verse 10 today. We won't go much further than that today. Verse 6, And John was clothed with, with camel's hair and with a girdle uh, of, a, of a skin about his loins, around his waist, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Now, I want to just tarry there just a little while, maybe, maybe even get a little bit humorous. I'm not sure. Remember we said earlier in our introduction that John Mark's mother was a well-to-do lady uh, of the early church. And the church was meeting <clears throat> in her house when Peter had his miraculous release. And they were there praying for Peter's release, and he came, and somehow they kind of doubted. But we find a young man that is coming from a, a, a very influential family, and we find him doing something kind of strange like some of us do today. We find his dress a little different from maybe the way he grew up. Certainly his diet was different, probably, from the way that he grew up. I'm not saying that Mary didn't serve honey, uh, wild honey. Uh, I'm not saying that she didn't. Probably at times she may have, but that's not the idea that I'm portraying. I'm portraying a young man that grew up and had all of the, well, sometimes we call that a silver spoon in his mouth. You ever heard that phrase? He was born, she was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. That means that, it had, that they had everything that they needed or wanted. And, and uh, sometimes that kind of goes along with someone being spoiled. I don't know that. That's Holostonian theology again. But for John to be dressed in camel's hair, camel's hair made a, made, made a coat, the, uh, the hair of the camels, and they would put it on, and, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It looked real good. I'm sure, sure maybe it wasn't the, the first thing you would buy in the men's warehouse. And then he had that leather girl around his waist, and his diet was honey, wild honey and locusts. Now, where did he get that? Have you ever wondered that? That wasn't a, a, a Kroger's uh, out, out in the wilderness. He had to find it. He had to find it. He had to catch his locusts. That was his diet when he was used to sitting around the table and maybe even had, uh, had a maid in there that was cooking and serving. I don't know that, but Maybe that was it. So a bit different, but by Mary being the mother that she was and a part of that early church and allowing him to meet in her house when they, when, when the Gentile, when, the, uh, when they were trying to kill, kill out, uh, you know, uh, James, and uh, uh, it was... It, it, it was quite different. but So she, she believed in what Isaiah and Malachi had said too, that he was coming. So she had taught John. She had taught John. But when John reached of age, he kind of followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. God had a plan for John. And it wasn't exactly sitting in the temple, wearing the fine, finest of clothes. It was going out to where the people would come. Now you say the wilderness is not a good place for people to come. Well, they came. God had all of that set up. They had better communications, better invitations than we have today because God was dealing and leading the people out to meet John the Baptist. That's why Mark, Luke, and John are, are, are such good books. They tell us about the very beginning of Jesus. Mark just focused on that uh, at the very beginning of his ministry. So let me read that fifth verse again where you can understand that. And there went out unto all, to him, all the lands of Judea and Jerusalem, the two split tribes were going out and were baptized for the remission of sins. And then verse 6, and John was clothed with camel hair. He wasn't exactly in the in crowd. He was choosing what God gave him and using 
what God had give, given him and doing what God anointed him to do. It wasn't the clothes that drew the people out. It was the Holy Spirit of God. It was the Holy Spirit of God. And then verse 7. And preach, this is talking about John the Baptist, and preach saying, the, the, there cometh, these cometh one, there cometh one mightier than I, verse 7, whose latches of his shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and unleash. And then John identified what he was doing there in Jordan. He said, I indeed have baptized you with water. But he, who is he? That's the coming. That's who John is preparing the way for. That is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he said in the very beginning of his, of, his, of his writings, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. A different baptism. That doesn't nullify the baptism that that we have by any means, but he will fill you with the Holy Spirit of God. That will move you, stir you, that will give you faith to believe, that will, that will allow you to be who God called you and I to be. Let me remind you that we that are a part of Hillsford Church that has been saved by the grace of God, we are responsible for living, first of all, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. How do you think we're doing? What kind of grade, what kind of grade do you think we deserve? An A? Maybe not. A B? Hopefully, certainly a C, uh, even certainly a passing grade. But that is what you and I work on with ourselves. We, we, can't, we can't work on it with the others uh, other than set examples before them and teach them if we're teachers, or preach to them if we're preachers, whatever. But we decide how, listen to me, how holy we're going to be. That is our job. That is our job. I indeed, verse 8, baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that, uh, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John the Baptist. Now, I'm going to go back to the ninth and the 10th verse next week, but I do want to close out with those. And straightway, verse 10, and straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit uh, like a dove descending upon him, verse 11, and there came a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just a thought. How pleased is God with Pastor Melvin? How pleased is God with Pastor Keith? How pleased is God with Pastor Taylor? How pleased is God with you? You know, I can't change how pleased God is with anyone except me. So I'm hoping, and I, I make these decisions myself just as you do. I'm hoping that God can look at us and say, I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased. Thank you for taking time to listen today. We'll be together again next week. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay safe. And come in. Come, come, stay in, you know. Remember, remember that we're isolating ourselves, not just to keep us from taking this COVID-19, is to prevent others from taking it too. So we're all in this together. God bless you. We love you, folks. We miss you. And we look forward to the time that we'll be able to be back together.
Father, thank you again for our time together today. Thank you for Mark, the writer that challenges our hearts, that shares the miracles of Christ, that shares the, the, the fact that Christ is none other than the Son of the living God. And will, as we move through the study, show us that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. As he makes his journey, some three short years recorded, and then heads to Jerusalem and dies on the cross. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you again. I love you. And until we meet again, good night.